I'm in Central America at the entrance to one of the world's most fascinating archaeological discoveries, Atun Tumichil Muknao. The ancient Maya considered caves to be portals to the underworld, the supernatural realm where their deities and ancestors exist. Within this very cave, the ancient Maya performed some of their most sacred rituals, including human sacrifice. I'm in Western Belize to explore the ancient Mayan underworld. And in this part of the world, if you're craving serious information, Dr. Jaime Aoi is your man. For the record, this guy is a real-life Indiana Jones. Professor Aoi's life has been devoted to digging into this culture, hoping to unlock the mysteries to one of the world's greatest civilizations. Who were these Mayan people, and what led them to such advanced success? And how did a culture at the peak of its existence nearly disappear overnight? The good doctor asked me to meet him in a remote region of the rainforest. It's located just a few miles from the ATM entrance, a site Dr. Aoi is credited with discovering. While there are thousands of caves throughout the world with captivating histories, Tunichil Muknal is extraordinary because it reveals many clues to the reasons that the ancient Maya may have fallen into decline. The ATM site has also revealed a cornucopia of skeletal remains, direct evidence of ritual human sacrifice. As I enter the mouth of this cave, I can't help but think about the scores of Mayans who swam into this very cave and never returned. Their lives sacrificed deep within the bowels of the cave in an effort to appease the gods. They were undoubtedly mothers, fathers, sons and daughters. Did they go in willingly? Or were they dragged into this cave kicking and screaming? This is how they would have entered the cave a uh, thousand years ago, huh? That's right. It's the main entrance into the, into the cave. And um, I think what you should know is uh, you just sort of made a point of transition. For the Maya, caves, especially the entrance of caves, were portals. Portals between the world that they lived in and the entrance to the underworld. So we're now well into the entrance to the underworld. This is the world of the gods. That's right. According to Dr. Aoi, the significance was clear to those entering the cave. When things were not going well on Earth, the ancient Maya would venture into the spiritual world to make things right with the gods. The rituals which ensued included the offering of blood, which they believed provided sustenance to the gods. Here we have the, the small skull, and what's interesting on this skull is the a uh, hole that you can see on top of it. Obviously that um, was either caused because somebody hit it on the head or it broke sometime, you know, posthumously. Um, if that had happened before death, it would have had some evidence of bone growth as it tried to heal. So it is easy, either the cause of death or, it, like I said, it happened sometime after death. This is a very, very young child, likely, you know, under a year old. Um, and again, you notice um, the Maya are, you know, stashing these little kids in these tight little spots where there's drip water. It's like, you know, it's an offering um, to, you know, to, to the rain god. Because children were considered pure and virginal, they were the preferred sacrifice of Chalk the rain god. And as we climb deeper into the cave, we discover even more sacrifices to Chalk. This is revealing to archaeologists like Dr. Aoi, who theorize ecological factors such as a great drought led to the collapse of Maya civilization. We're at one of the deepest sections of Agton Tinichil Muknal, and what we're looking at are the remains of a very young individual. Um, not much older than about 20 and certainly not younger than about 15. And um, we do think that it might be female, but we're not 100% uh, sure. And the reason for that uncertainty, obviously, is because most of the bones are still sort of covered with some of the calcium carbonate. But for us, what's important is, you know, what does this skeleton represent? You know, why is this individual here? You know, why are the Maya coming into places like this and, you know, sacrificing these young people, their infants, you know, children? And I think that, you know, they're going through desperate times. And desperate times usually, you know, 
cause people to react in desperate ways. And so, you know, they're coming in here and sacrificing these people. The, the, the people are the actual offerings uh, to the gods. You know, it's when things are tight, you pray, you look for divine intervention. You know, you want your God to come and make things better. So I think it got to the point where these people were unable to feed themselves adequately and the system started to fail and you will leave. If you can't feed yourself and your family, you will go. You know, the story of, of human culture uh, is one of cycles and uh, hopefully we won't reach that, you know, that point in, in our cycle that the Maya reached you know, when their civilization declined. The Maya left behind an indelible legacy. And fortunately, descendants of the ancient Maya can still be found living and practicing their tradition throughout Central America.